Uh, you said a lot of things about what I have done in my career, but what I'm going to do is to play act and take you to 1968, where I am Mr. Dasan, a humble watchman, watching the interests of the Cherangatu state in uh, Perambra Assembly of Kerala. 350 folks used to live in my estate once upon a time, but as time and tide waited for no man, everybody left except me, the watchman, Mr. Dasan. The elections are going to be held, and the election commission has sent me a small and polite request. As per rules, only two kilometers is the maximum distance I need to traverse to cast my vote. However, I can also come back with a reply, which I did. And I said, look, it's not worth my while to walk 13 kilometers, which is the next polling booth, and it's not worthwhile for you, Election Commission, to bring a polling booth to my house right next door. However, India being India, and power of the one vote being what it is, Mr. Dasan is informed, I am informed, that no, the Election Commission is going to hold a polling booth right next to my house in the dilapidated hutment which houses the assistant engineer of the Dasan estate. So not one, not two, not three, but six polling officials descend 24 hours back before the elections to this dilapidated assistant electrical engineer's office. Make sure everything is in order. So two of them are poll managers, three of them are security men, and one is a driver. So six people, this polling booth, all set up for me so that I can go and vote. I take my time grazing my five cows, and then in the afternoon, show up at great leisure to cast my vote. What do you think happens to those six polling officials after me, Mr. Dasan, has cast his vote? They wait. They wait for the entire day to get over before somebody can come, at least conceptually, to say this was a bogus vote and I am the real Mr. Dasan. That is the power of one vote, but some of you must be wondering why so much effort for one man going all the way and six people paid for by the taxpayer are doing all this. So let me play act a little bit more and become Mr. Guru Bharat Das, a priest. And I am located in the jungles of Junagadh in Gujarat in the midst of lions, leopards, and nilgais. So these are the animals I have for company, and there's not a single human being around me, the temple priest of this area, for 20 kilometers. Now again, the rule book kicks in, and the election commission asks me whether I could be relocating somewhere and possibly vote from a kilometer or a two kilometer away polling booth. I say, no, I have temple duties to perform, and therefore, another polling booth is set up right next to my temple in a bare structure erected by the forest department where even the forest department does not have a single person inside that room. And the six people come, they set up shop, wait for me to cast my vote, but I'm a late sleeper. So I kind of do my temple duties, then go off to sleep, come back by about 3.34, cast my vote. They again wait for someone to come and protest if I were a bogus voter, and then go back. Now, what kind of effort is going in to this sort of power of one vote is the burden of my song. And the, the reason for it very, is very simple, that all through my growing up years, I'm ashamed to say I did not vote. I grew up in a family where we were told that there is nobody worthwhile electing, and why bother? So from the age of 21, which was the voting age during my years, to the age of almost 45, I never voted. Until I met Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, the then Chief Election Commissioner and a compatriot from my undergrad school. And he set me around uh, a lot of uh, polling booths, a lot of uh, meetings which were in camera, just to understand for my columns what goes into making the Indian election and the power of one vote. It is here that I learned, ladies and gentlemen, 
that one Mr. C.P. Joshi, who was a union cabinet minister once upon a time, but was the state Congress chief of Rajasthan in the instant case, he stood for elections and uh, he had a fairly religious wife and a religious daughter. So they decided not to go and vote for him. Instead, they went to the temple to invoke the Almighty. And guess what happened? Mr. C.P. Joshi lost by one vote. He has lost by one vote, polling 62,215 votes. 62,215 votes, and he won't believe it. So he asked for a recounting, including of postal votes, 501 of them. Postal votes are those which are given to uh, polling officials, there's so many of them, 11 million in the general elections, and therefore their votes are sealed in an envelope and opened on the day of counting. Again, the total of 62,215 stared Mr. C.P. Joshi in the face, which means he had no option but to accept loss by one vote. So remember my play acting of Mr. Dasan in the Cheranga to estate, Remember my play acting of Guru Bharat Das, the priest in Junagar, the power of one vote is understood a lot in Indian democracy and the largest and the oldest one at that. It is not as if I am just referring to a freak case of Mr. C.P. Joshi as a loser by one vote. This has happened before, it can happen again. And the one vote could be yours. Neera Vikram Singh, she lost by one vote in Dhar in Madhya Pradesh. A.R. Krishnamurti, he lost in Santher Ma Rahali, pardon my pronunciation, in Karnataka by one vote. So if you don't go and vote and you have a very pious wife or a daughter, you know what could happen. <laughs> it is also true that some people have not lost by one vote, but because of the power of one vote, there has been a tie. Can you believe it? India has had elections where there has been a tie. For example, in uh, Benulim in uh, Goa in 1974, in uh, Kherapara in Meghale in 1988, both candidates, despite a recount, had polled exactly the same number of votes, and the polling officer had no option except to draw lots and declare one of them the winner. So if someone had showed up, it would have made a world of difference to the quality of governance the, the other one uh, finally offered. Now, why are we making such a big deal of the power of one vote? The kind of efforts that go in could also you know, make us wonder whether it's worthwhile to stay at home, have a holiday, uh, complain of stomachache, go and watch a movie, and not bother about 834 million people who went and voted on general elections uh, 2014. So 834 million people were eligible to vote, and only 554 of million of them actually went and exercised their franchises. So we have used in government horses to helicopters to elephants to reach remote accesses of this country, set up one million such booths as the one that I showed in the uh, estate story. Uh, we have gone and uh, put two million EVMs, electronic voting machines, to ensure that every single person who is eligible to vote does show up. But what happens? 834 million are eligible. Only 554 million of us go and vote. So. Basic math, 280 million of us did not vote. And here I try to explain the, uh, the, the, the matter in the context of one single vote, how elections and the context changes. There is so much of effort that's, that goes into ensuring that India delivers quality democracy. In the early 50s, 1952 to be precise, when India set out to have its first general elections, and those were the times when state elections also coincided, a great man called Sukumar Sen was given the uh, responsibility of conducting elections. And there were no uh, ele election commissioners to assist him. He was the only guy standing. And from then until today, the election commission holding on to 
this massive task across a million poll booths, error-free, has actually uh, been delivering a, a, a kind of election which we can be very proud of, but we can also marvel at the fact that it is the most inclusive election in the world. We had a franchisee for women right from the beginning. Many Western democracies have followed after us. We have had a fantastic system, which I saw as a reporter in an earlier life. When women and men queue up to vote, there is a cultural context where some women do not want their faces to be in the photograph and be available to candidates and their polling agents. Our system ensures that the soft copy that is available to political parties of the electoral rolls does not have women's faces. Not only that, there is a cultural problem that Many families in the rural areas in particular tell women, oh, you'll waste the whole day standing in the queue, don't go and vote, stay at home, do your job. Because of that, we have ensured in India that for every man who votes, two women are allowed to vote. Isn't this an impressive and ennobling experience? The fact that women can finish the voting much faster and therefore go back, and there's less uh, disincentive before them to, to go and exercise their right as citizens. The advantage is obvious to see, even though there is an adverse uh, uh, sex ratio among men and women in India, women have outnumbered men in 50 to 60 percent of uh, uh, polling booths as well as in, uh, in the overall constituency context in India, which also shows their propensity to be uh, teachers to the next generation of people to go and you know, exercise their power of single vote. So when all this effort is going on, it may be useful, therefore, to also remember that age is no bar. Uh, there are uh, people who, uh, in my research I discovered, who come on this kind of uh, uh, vehicle, uh, not horse, not camel, not helicopter, but sometimes on charpai, the great Indian cot. And this man is 92 years old, and he believes in the power of one vote. So this is a visual from uh, Dr. Qureshi's book, which uh, cites me as one of the people who inspired the title, The Undocumented Wonder, which is the Indian election. But this 92-year-old man, if you would think, is the oldest voter. No, that's not true. Uh, record has it that uh, there is a 100-year-old voter who showed up, and uh, his name is Ram Vilas Singh in Vaishali district of Bihar, a constituency. At 100, he had the spunk and the energy to come and exercise the power of the single vote. I think the cases of uh, C.P. Joshi, and I hope that uh, some people of his uh, family and friends and constituencies would, would remember he went and fought it till the Supreme Court, but ultimately the matter was lost. Uh, we'll remember that the power of the single vote lies very much residing in the context of this particular TEDx Bandra, because uh, unilateral act and universal impact can have no better example than the power that resides in the single finger on your left hand. And if you, by some chance, don't have that finger, there is methodology to go on and on, and then finally your right hand. So the election commission will ensure that you go and vote and make sure that things are very convenient, and ultimately you have a greater right to complain and to uh, set any wrongdoer fine rather than sit at home and complain of something that, that isn't existing. So do exercise the power of one vote. And I hope if I can convert even one of you to actually go and uh, exercise your franchise, I'm not embarrassing anybody and saying, let's do a show of hands if you vote or not. But in your hearts, if you are conjoined to the fact that your vote truly, truly makes a difference, 280 million of us did not exercise our vote, and that probably can determine the quality of governance we give unto ourselves and befittingly in the world's oldest, largest, and hopefully the greatest democracy and within our lifetimes. <laughs>